Hi, I'm Wei Dang, co-founder and chief strategy officer at StackRocks. In this video, I'm going to give you a roadmap for how to tackle security challenges as you and your organization increase your usage of Kubernetes and containers. At StackRocks, we call this the container security maturity model, and it's useful because the security issues you face are going to be different uh, depending on the stage of your usage. For instance, um, security issues going to be and challenges going to be very different. For instance, if you're building container images on your local machine. Uh, versus running many cloud-native applications at scale in production. And so here are five stages I'm going to go through and uh, some security steps that you can take for each one. And so the first stage is really about individual projects. And at this stage, individual developers are learning and experimenting with containers, and they're building um, you know, container images, uh, probably Docker images, on their uh, local machines and the images are you know probably not being used to launch containers in production uh, the apps are relatively simple uh, and typically there's not a need for orchestration even though maybe you're testing out the waters uh, with platforms like Kubernetes and so at this stage you know the security emphasis should really be um, on things like secure coding practices um, and you also want to start thinking about uh, opportunities to shift left um, with security and inject security controls earlier in development and DevOps workflows. Um, and then, you know, separately, you want to start identifying ways that you can utilize the software supply chain, you know, as a means to serve as a centralized cho choke point uh, for production changes and therefore moving to a more declarative security model. Um, now, at the second stage, you know, this is really when the organization has an official containerization project. And here you have, you know, multiple people, you know, who are, you know, working together to prove out the benefits of containerization and cloud-native technologies. And so this might mean uh, you're uh, containerizing an existing app or part of an existing app, for instance, a stateless component like a web tier. Um, or it might mean that you're building a new application, you know, using containers and perhaps uh, microservices architectures as well. Um, and so... Uh, at this stage, you know, additional components come into play. You need to think about, you know, a registry to uh, securely store the images that you built, and you think about uh, Kubernetes itself uh, for orchestration. And so at this stage, you want to think about organizational uh, governance uh, and overall policies. Um, you also want to think about uh, how to implement tools and processes to prevent um, vulnerabilities from being introduced into your cluster environments. And so you, know, you need to think about vulnerability management and what you want that to look like. Um, and then you want to think about some basic configurations that give you security hygiene. And so these are can be based on things such as um, industry or ecosystem benchmarks put out by bodies like the Center for Internet Security. Now, the third stage really marks a significant milestone for anyone who is using um, containers and Kubernetes, and that's running your you know, first application in production. And this really unlocks the ability for multiple teams to utilize Kubernetes for many applications or to scale up applications. And so there's a lot of different considerations here. And the operational aspects of Kubernetes really come into play because um, you know, Kubernetes itself has vulnerabilities and separately your applications, you know, if they're running in production and especially if they're internet facing, uh, they are exposed to uh, real world risks. And additionally, you know, any instance can have impact on things like availability and uptime. So there are a lot of things that you need to consider at this stage uh, from a security perspective. And some of those are, uh, first you want to think about Kubernetes components and you know, any vulnerabilities that they may contain. And so these are things like the control plane and node components you want to ensure are well protected. You want to think about appropriate isolation between your workloads, but you also want to think at a pod level you know, about privileges that are granted to pods and you know, what they're able to do uh, within a cluster. Um, and then you need to think about things like network segmentation. Um, and this is what allows you to restrict you know, and control traffic uh, between individual pods. Uh, and then separately, you need to in, uh, implement runtime security. 
And so this is really about ensuring you have the ability to monitor um, and detect on anomalous or malicious activity that might be indicative of attacker behavior or something uh, that's executing individual containers. And then depending on the application, you may have more advanced compliance uh, requirements. And these are things like uh, PCI or HIPAA or uh, SOC 2 and so on. Now the fourth stage of Kubernetes usage is really about um, expansion uh, and scaling up. And at this stage, you know, you might be scaling up that initial application that you ran in production. You might be putting more apps into production. You might be uh, putting all new apps that your organization is building uh, uh, and, and developing on top of running on Kubernetes. And so as you scale up, you have multiple teams who are now utilizing the platform. And so uh, complexity can become a real problem. And so to address that, you need to think about standardization in your workflows and policies. Uh, for instance, with regards to instant response or provisioning clusters. Uh, and this is really key to ensure that you have consistency across those things. Um, you need to think about automation. Um, and this really applies to both configurations as well as analysis uh, in order to keep up with how dynamic the environment is. And then you need to think about advanced isolation because at this stage, um, multi-tenancy can really introduce additional security risks. And you want to factor that in when you think about your cluster setups. And at the fifth stage, this is when Kubernetes itself and containers have become an organizational standard. And what that means is that really all applications that your um, organization is building and running are in some way built on top of Kubernetes or built for Kubernetes or uh, related to uh, cloud native principles. And at this stage, at this scale, um, level of scale and operational maturity, um, it's very likely that your organization is turning to new technologies such as um, service meshes to enable different types of use cases. For instance, uh, in the case of service meshes, you might be looking for uh, to enable service discovery or routing or encryption. Um, it's also likely that teams are going to be leveraging the extensibility of Kubernetes uh, using things like uh, custom resource definitions. Um, and then your organization may be looking to run um, Kubernetes applications across multiple cloud environments using different Kubernetes platforms. And so all of these things uh, introduce uh, the need for specific security best practices depending on um, these specific areas um, as well as you know more advanced use cases when it comes to security and really uh, effective security strategy for addressing these um, has to be built on the learnings of all the previous stages that we've just walked through. And so there you go, um, a multi-stage approach for how to tackle uh, Kubernetes security depending on your organization's usage of it. Uh, to learn more, visit www.stackrocks.com.